Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Fishing with Big D. So today's episode, we're going to be going out to the river or a creek, not 100% sure where, just yet. And we're going to be doing some ultralight fishing, uh, but my main focus will probably be rock bass. I love to catch rock bass on this particular stream, and it's very fun and exciting. Now, the reason I'm doing this video, I want to review two products. This is a reviewer's request edition. Um, I had a person reach out and they're wanting to know what a good rod and reel combo for an ultralight setup would be. Now, I sat down and I thought about this and I don't really honestly have a particular rod and reel picked out just for lightweight fishing. Usually I'll go with really small tackles such as like a 164th ounce trout magnet and some small one inch gulp minnows. That's usually my go-tos when I'm pan fishing for bluegill and stuff like that or even small trout in small streams. But I never really focused on having a true dedicated rod and reel to that. So I decided to go online and do some research and shopping and I wanted to show you guys what I come up with. We're going to walk through them real quick and a review for both of these hand selected items I picked and I match these two up to make a good combo for ultralight fishing. We're going to throw a two to four pound test on it and we're going to give it a shot and just see how well it turns out. So if you're seeing this video it turned out good. Alright guys let's take an in-depth look at the rod and reel combo I chose to piece together to make my ultralight setup. So don't butcher me too bad as I try to pronounce these names. They are foreign and I know I'm probably going to get them wrong. Just don't kill me too bad in the comment section down below. There will be descriptions so you can have all the details you need and there will be links to the Amazon accounts I bought them from. That way if you want to purchase them, they're there. You can find them simple and easy. Just click that link. Alright guys, so the rod that I chose as I was researching ultralights online with Amazon and going through the details, I ended up setting a, I think it was a budget of 150 bucks. I didn't want to go no higher than that, but I did want to come in cheaper if at all possible, but I still wanted something quality. So this is what I come up with, guys. Let's take an in-depth review on both of these products. We'll go out and we'll test them. So the rod I chose is coming from a company called Suge Lane. Hopefully I did not butcher that too bad. This is either a Chinese or Japanese company and they make ultralight rods and they do the telescoping rods, stuff like that, and a few other products. You can find them on their online store or through Amazon and certain U.S. retailers. So they're a well-known company. They have their name out there. And I ended up choosing the model number PAE-5. 562UL for the rod. Uh, like I said, there'll be more links down below if you need to find this again. It is a five foot six, two piece rod, and it is an ultralight. It is super, super lightweight. But let's start here at the handle and we'll go over the features. I ended up choosing the cork style handle. I just love that look. I love the feel. It helps with slippage and just a really nice soft material. Kind of like this a little bit better than the foam style handles. They tend to get sticky when your hands are sweaty out in the hot sun. Cork seems to do a little better for me, but that's just your own personal opinion. Now, looking at the real base, this has the plastic nut on the threads here. You screw that up and down to lock your real base in. Has some stainless covers here, looks like. Overall, not the best quality. I like different styles on other types of rods, but this will work. It should do just fine. Moving along, we have the little hook saver here. I don't know if you can see it too good. There you go. Now that's just so you can hook your hook up as you're traveling or moving along the bank so you don't have a swinging line that's going to get tangled into a mess. And we're moving up to the rod section. Very thin and limber rod and super sensitive. These are made of graphite blanks. That's generally what most fishing poles are made of anymore. It's kind of the go-to material. Now, this fishing pole pretty much boasts that it uses line between a weight of two pound to six pound tops is the recommendation. And it's good to throw a lure from one eighth an ounce up to about three quarters of an ounce in weight. 
Once again, that's just the recommendations from the manufacturer. Now we're moving up to the eyelets. These are tied on here and it's got that durable tape on it. Uh, the actual eyelets are made of stainless steel and then the inserts are made of steel. Now, that's not my favorite combination. I would rather have ceramic. I feel like ceramic does a lot better and a little bit higher quality, but these should still do good for the lightweight fishing we're doing. We're talking trout and panfish mainly, small game. So we're not going to scuff these up and beat them up too bad. You do have to still watch for little nicks that will cut your line. Now, once again, I stated this is a five foot six rod, two piece, and it is super lightweight, durable, flexible. It's got some really good flex in it. And just the sensitivity is amazing, guys. The tip is just so amazing. It's very lightweight, quick action, and it's got a little bit of a backbone. It is so flexible. It's crazy just how flexible that is. I'm just super impressed. It's got to be just a few ounces in weight. I could take this and spin it around like a little baton if I wanted to. It's just freaky just how lightweight it truly is. It is a really nice looking setup. Now I only have about 40 bucks tied into this and that's actually a pretty good deal. Now if I had to rate this rod just on the looks that I have here by viewing it, not actually using it yet, I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. I love the handle. I don't like this little plastic nut thing here. I'd like to see something a little more durable, but overall it's keeping the cost downward. And then I would upgrade from a steel insert to a ceramic insert for the eyelets, guys. Only complain on it, but other than that, this is going to do the job. And I feel like it's going to be durable and last me for quite a while. All right, guys, let's take a look at the reel that we chose to pair with this combo. This is the Shimano Sienna. This is the 1000 series reel. It's a smaller reel. It's got a very nice color and style. Black with the red accents. And Shimano is a pretty decent name. It's well known. They've got some higher end stuff out there for those that like the higher end, higher costing, better products. And then they've got a lower end that goes all the way down towards like the Walmart style and brand. So they're well known, well distributed, and a pretty good company. I use a lot of their stuff. I love Shimano for trout fishing. I got a rod and reel combo that I use all the time. It's one of my favorites. So I chose to go with Shimano because they're better known and I know they have good quality materials. Now this reel is going to cost you around 30 to 40 bucks as well. Once again, the description and link will be down below. I'm going to open this up and we're going to go over the product and the details. All right, guys, we've got the reel out of the package here. Check that out. It is a pretty looking reel. Uh, check out the red accents. Uh, it's got the stainless bell, it looks like, stainless features and the handle. Uh, very comfortable grip, soft plastic style handle as well. Uh, overall, this is a really nice look and feel to a reel. Like I stated, this is the Sienna. It's well balanced. It feels really comfortable. You don't get that wobble when you get to reeling really fast and you let her go. That's how you know it's well balanced and well built. They are a very, very nice company. Shimano has just always been a good brand. You've got the drag system here that you can adjust. Feels good. You've got your line saver. I don't know if you can see that, guys, that line saver right there. Uh, this is an how you say it an ampidextrous reel. You can use it left-handed or right-handed. It'll screw and swap over. Uh, it also has an anti-reverse system in there, so that it does not reverse instant stop. So just going over some of the features, um, it's like three kilograms in weight. If I'm not mistaken. I think it's around two pounds, something like that. Uh, the model number is SN1000FG. Once again, the links is in the description below. The line recommendation is mono, four pound or two pound. Uh, spinning reel combo. This will work well with that rod that I've got. Uh, it's got, like I stated, the anti-reverse. 
the gear ratio is 5.0 to 1. So it's going to work out really well with this rod. Uh, it's got three plus one ball bearing system on the paperwork here. Uh, just overall, just very stylish, feels comfortable, really sleek and lightweight, which is what we're looking for with this lightweight combo. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the real base and we're going to get a feel for it. And then we're going to spool it up with some line. And that'll also give us a little determination on how it feels as we're spooling it. Uh, we're just going to take our nut, walk it all the way down the threads. We're going to insert the real base like so. And you're just going to screw it in until you get that locked in place. You want to get it just hand tight. I do not recommend over tightening as you could bust that plastic. It's just another feature I do not like about the plastic nut there. But man, that feels good on this combo. Just the weight and the action in that reel. It's just so sensitive, guys. I mean, this is going to be awesome. I got a good feeling about it just from looking at it. All right, let's get this spooled up. And then we're going to take it out and we're going to put it to the test. We'll try to catch something, hopefully nothing too big, and not break it on our first go. But I just got a good feeling it's going to feel really good fighting these smaller fish. It's going to make the fight like a two to three pound smally on the end of this line, even though I'm pulling in a bluegill. So I'm getting excited. Let's get going. All right, guys, we're out here heading down to the riverbank. Uh, Got the ultralight here. I ended up choosing the Nico Helgermite for my lure. It meets that weight. Got it. Texas rigged with a small split shot. I love this setup. Let's go test this rod out. See if we can catch some rock bass or even a small mouth. All right, we're down here at the water. Let's see how well she casts. Oh yeah, that's a smooth cast. Now all I'm gonna do is hop this along the bottom. The water is actually up pretty high. We had a lot of rain the last two days. So not very surprising. We might throw an additional split shot on here. But for right now, we're going to stick with what we got. And I'm just going to let that sink. After a couple of seconds, I'm just going to hop it a little bit, give it some action. Man, the sensitivity of this rod is amazing. You can feel stuff bouncing through the line there. I can feel the contact with the lure there on the bottom and all this rock. All right, guys, we're here at the second spot on the river. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. But overall, my first impressions of the combo, I really, really like it. It can really, really pitch a lure pretty good. If you stay within that weight zone of the recommendations on your line and your lure, Seems like a pretty good combination we got set up here. Kind of a tree pounder, but as you can see that rod, it's made to put a good bow and flex in there. Definitely going to be good for fighting a fish. Let's check our knot and our line. Got him. Oh, he dropped it. Dang. Got him at time. 
Oop, drag a little bit loose. What we got here? Oh, rock bass. That's what we're looking for, guys. That rod did well. Look at that fat old rock bass. That's what we like. Side of the jaw there. There we go. Check that rock bass out, guys. <laughs> That's what we're targeting. Let's let him go. <laughs> Boy, it's fun. Let's see if we can pull another one out of there. Overall, the rod did good. Had to tighten my drag up just a little bit and get that better hook set. Love the way this rod handled. I was able to pull him out over that little piece of brush. Definitely liking this combo setup, guys. I could feel the sensitivity of that bite, the tugging and the pecking at that lure. And then I felt him pulling my line. I was able to reel in and set that hook. Got him. We got rock bass. <laughs> I like how this reel handles the rod. Such an amazing amount of give and flexibility. Even with them super lightweight lures, I can feel so much going on. It distributes the weight very well. Now this is not a big old smallie by no means, but the rock bass here are a little chunky boogers. They get up to two and three pounds, I believe. Right in the top of the mouth. That's why they call them red eyes, or rock bass. Pretty little booger. Let's let him go. <laughs> it's always that one last cast and then you turn the camera off looks like a rock bass I can feel the way he's fighting yep there he is <laughs> another chunky rock bass Hooked him right in the roof. Not bad, chunky little feller. See them mean red eyes? These boogers are fun to catch. Especially on top water. <laughs> but it's pretty fun catching them on this lightweight gear. You feel like you're fighting a bass, like a large mouth, maybe even a small mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 